Today we're speaking with Dr. Deborah Smith, a gynecologist at the Whitman Walker Clinic in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. What are some of the challenges faced by doctors and clinicians when it comes to health disparities? Well, I think doctors don't walk into the exam room on a given day and think, I'm going to do something about health disparities today. Yet everyone is committed to doing the best that they can for and with an individual patient. I think that I say uh, for a patient because indeed we have important and purposeful treatments that we can offer. But I also say with a patient because to the best of my knowledge, none of us has ever taken a patient home with us at the end of the day. So that means the patient has to return to their social and physical environment, their families and communities and all the influences that can impact on how they're able to carry out our prescriptions. So we're good at knowing how to get your prescription filled at the drugstore, but we have a big challenge in understanding how to assist individuals in carrying out all the other prescriptions that they need to fulfill in their everyday lives in order to be healthy. What do you think is needed to overcome cancer health disparities? Well, there are certainly serious issues in access, availability, acceptability, affordability for the entire continuum of cancer care, from screening to diagnosis and treatment to survivorship care. And these issues vary among and between populations. What I think is most important is for us to understand that notwithstanding the fact that there are important differences like the uh, differences in mortality from breast cancer uh, among women of color versus their white counterparts, that we have to acknowledge that we are not eliminating breast cancer. Um, we are not significantly modifying mortality for many women at all. When I was in middle school, the slogan was, we want to wipe out cancer in your lifetime. We're not there yet. And so we have to be willing to look at uh, all of the factors that uh, impact on cancer care. From your perspective, what can cancer researchers do to achieve these goals? Well, I think that we need to have both the quantitative and the qualitative researchers learn to work together. Neither one of us actually has the answer to the problem. Neither one of us has the solution. And the solutions only come when we work together and add our various expertise together. What advice or words of encouragement do you have for those who are working to eliminate health disparities? Well, this is hard work, and so indeed some folks are aware every day when they come into the exam room and come into the office that they are working against significant obstacles out there uh, on behalf of their patients, and it can feel overwhelming. And it's very important to be altruistic, and that's why people go into the helping and the caring professions. But I think it's also important to understand that uh, part of what we're working toward is um, equity. And in the face of uh, all the issues of over-medicalization and safety issues and complications and suboptimal care, sometimes the haves are not necessarily getting exactly what we should be striving for either. So we protect the interests of the have-nots and we're working on their behalf, but we have to be clear about what our objectives are and what goals we're trying to reach. And so we know that, that some of what we may be striving for has, has limitations. One of the things that we've learned from some of the socioeconomic and sociomedical um, advocacy movements, such as for breast cancer care, and for AIDS care is that when you take the equity position, it actually really improves the outcomes for all persons concerned. 
not just the disadvantaged. Thank you so much, Dr. Smith. You're welcome.